Right now, I want to cover something that's really important and very, very serious. Look, we're all in the gun business or we're around firearms a lot, and we need to be responsible individuals for ourselves, for the safety of ourselves, for the safety of others. But what happens when there's a negligent discharge? And let me tell you, having been in the business for 30 plus years, it can happen. Or you're at the range and somebody discharges a firearm and accidentally shoots someone else or themselves. Or somebody's in your shop and they're carrying concealed and they do something silly and they have a round go off and somebody gets hit and you get injured. You now have the, the clock is ticking. Of course, call 911 immediately, but you may be out in the stick somewhere and you have to do something to act. I have Joseph with me and Joseph, you're a doctor, but you've done so much to create an answer to this problem. Can you tell us about it? Tell us about your kit. Tell us about a proper response and some other options. Well, you know, we have a lot of issues these days with the headlines. All you have to do is read the headlines and you know that there are shooting incidents. There are, of course, always at your local range, there's going to be that mishap. There's going to be all sorts of situations where you will find schools, workplaces, places of worship that are at risk. And so what we have decided to do is to go outside our normal survival uh, bailiwick, and we are now putting together an entire line of kits specifically meant to stop bleeding. We Including out, lunge, gunshot bleeding. Right, exactly. And, and we learned from Iraq and Afghanistan that one in five deaths from hemorrhage can be prevented by the rapid action of a bystander with the appropriate equipment. And so our mission, my mission for the rest of my life is to save lives by putting those materiel in the hands of those Good Samaritans. Great. So you created a packet here that was really brought down to the level of someone that's a teen or even maybe a preteen. And of course that pretty much qualifies for me too, you know, that immature <laughs> level, right? But it's numbered Join even. Tell, tell me about how we would use this. Well, I decided to put together a kit in which the average teenager or the average untrained teacher would have a good chance of being effective in slowing or stopping hemorrhage in order to give time for EMS to arrive. And so I put together a kit in which everything is clearly numbered and comes with waterproof instructions. Actually, there's instructions here, but there's also instructions inside as well. Of course, when you're in a uh, uh, excited situation, you're, situation you're, yeah. you'll look for, you're looking around, and so I want to give people a number of different places that they can look for to find instructions. But the instructions that come out of here, let's say I take, I take this off the wall. My, my goal, by the way, is to have kits like this right next to the fire extinguisher, right next to the AED on the wall of every public venue. And Excellent. I predict that that's what's going to happen. It may not be this kit, but that will be what happens in the future. So I take this kit, I open it up, and I pour everything out. Once I pour everything out, it's gonna look, let's say, like this. And you see that everything is numbered. So you have number one, looks like this. The kit, the kit instructions, which are on waterproof, bloodproof yeah. paper will actually show you what number one is. You don't have to know English. You can read the instructions if you know English, but if you don't know English, you can still know that number one is this. It looks like this, and this is what it looks like when you're using it. Then you go to number two, which happens to be an H&H &H compressed gauze, an excellent gauze because it weighs nothing. Oh, yeah. But when I open this up, it'll become 12 feet long Mine. and four and a half inches. And so there's number two. And what do you do with it? You apply pressure with it. You find that that because there's one decision to be made with this entire kit. And that is, does that 12 foot gauze become totally saturated with blood? If it does, you go on to using the tourniquet. Now, and so what I have here is a SWAT tourniquet. Now, the combat medics in your audience are going to say, now what is that crazy old country doctor doing using a SWAT tourniquet when he should be using the CAT tourniquet, the combat application tourniquet, or perhaps 
the softy, the special operation forces tactical tourniquet. Well, think about it. With the cap tourniquet, you have des a tourniquet designed for your arms. You mean an adult? An adult's arms. You're absolutely right. The arms of a soldier, the legs of a soldier. But the SWAT tourniquet is something that can be used for any size arm. So if I have a three-year-old, if I have a four-year-old with a, an injury to the leg or injury to the arm, yeah. then I can use the SWAT tourniquet and use it in an effective manner that would be able to apply enough tension that would allow enough pressure so that you have control of some of that bleeding. It may not be perfect, but it's certainly going to slow down the hemorrhage. And so that's one thing that you can do that would be very useful in a situation where you're dealing with children. Now, after that, of course, you're going to have things like blood clotting powder, things like Cellox blood clotting powder. Cellox is an excellent way to stop bleeding. It has been used uh, for uh, military in the past. It has been used in just about every situation that you could have a major bleed that you can use a quick clot in, you can use Cellox. Cellox itself actually has a little better chance to stop bleeding if you're a person that has a, an issue with blood thinners. Right. So, so I've taken aspirin. I take baby aspirin right, every day, right? right so. Exactly. Or Coumadin. A lot yeah. of folks take that. A lot of maybe people take Plavix. Gosh, there are a lot of different medicines that will decrease your clotting factor's ability right. to function. And this will help. And this will help. And this now, will allow you to function. Would you put this on under the tourniquet or how would that work? I would put it below the tourniquet. The, the wound should be you, unless you're under fire, you should be two to four inches uh, above where the wound is, or closer to the torso oh, to the, where the wound is. with the SWAT is. tourniquet. Yes, with, with the tourniquet, yes. What we've done is stopped the bleeding using our hemostatic bandage. So now what we need to do is we need to wrap it like you would wrap any wound. And so, of course, you have a roller gauze here. That's number five. Okay. Now, I would like to have some additional tension on that, a little pressure on that area. So I have a compression bandage. There are many different compression bandages. Uh, Oleus makes one. The Israeli uh, dressing is the most famous one. We have it in all our kits. You see it right back here. And this is a mini compression dressing that's made by H&H &H that also seems to work well and is also very, very space conservative. So right. really useful for my particular kit and my purpose is there. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, your people who are bleeding are probably going to be in some level of shock, and Correct. those people need to be kept warm, so you have a Mylar blanket. As a last item I have in this particular version of this kit, I have twin chest seals. So mm -hmm. you have chest seals in case there is a... a, a sucking a, wound. A, or... Right, a sucking chest wound, an open chest wound. We have an entry and exit version here, so you always have two. And uh, in some cases, I are they the same? They're just they're exactly use... the same. Okay. And they're vented, so what they do is they allow the air that's in the chest cavity that's preventing the lung from inflating to go out, but no more air to come in. Every one way, one time, way valve. Right. Exactly. And every time air goes out of the chest cavity, a little more of the lung, a little more of the lung can inflate, and that's what you're trying to do. Wow. It's a temporary fix, but. It's one that could save their life. Awesome. So Joseph, one of the things that occurs to me is that, you know, it's important to like practice with something, not be the first time you see it. I think, uh, I don't know what these run, what these cost, but it seems like it'd be worth just having one open up, dump out and, and mess with a little bit, just so it's not the first time you've ever seen it. I'll tell you what really frosts my cookies is when somebody spends seven or 800 bucks on one of my bigger bags, and takes it and puts it on the top shelf of their closet and then says, well, I'm medically prepared. For goodness sake, make the kit your own, take a look at it, make sure that you can use everything in it. If you can't, get my book and learn or look at my videos or I will do a webinar if you have a group of your listeners, your viewers 
that want to get together and get a few of these, I will do a personal live webinar wow. on how to use every single one of these items. Super and valuable. That's the thing. This kit drives me. It drives me crazy when people just buy an item and assume that they're ready. You there, know, yeah. you, Far you, from it. You know, you absolutely have to be able to practice with some of this stuff. You, it's just like gardening. If you're a survival gardener, you don't want to plant that That'd first be your seed. your first year, yeah, first plant garden. that first seed after the EMP occurred yeah, and right, trucks right. are no longer delivering food to the supermarket. So it's truly be prepared. And the way absolutely. to be prepared, especially in something so critical yeah. as a, saving a life, yeah. you know, you don't have time and your, your focus is gonna narrow very quickly. So if you at least touch the items before, and I really do like with this kit that you got them numbered. Cause that's like, okay, one, you know, I'm getting control. Now you have a couple other kits. Tell me about these two kits. Well, these are a couple of our favorite kits. This is a popular kit and, and some of your viewers out there who also know about us will probably have this kit in their home. And it's, it's a compact gunshot kit, but for me, it's just about anything. If you, you're shot with a crossbow bolt, yeah, yeah. or if somebody well, you stabs get it just you with a, a cleaver, slice, you know, that slice gives you a good slice. This will stop your bleeding. It's got a military-style tourniquet, and by the way, we customized a lot of these, so we'll give you the choice of a softy or a cat tourniquet. We'll give you the choice of a hemostatic dressing of your choice, a quick clock combat gauze, maybe, or a C-Lox dressing. We'll give you in in addition. We wind up giving you an Israeli battle dressing, an excellent pressure dressing here we even have a decompression needle 14 gauge by 3.25 inches in case somebody in case there's some blast effect or if somebody takes a baseball bat to your ribs and you get you know, swelling or and bleeding. somebody doesn't know how to really handle a shotgun and winds up getting you know injured from a recoil you're able to and and punctures the lung you can still take care of that situation i think every range needs to have a kit like this and I, it has so this been is like popular. a range bag. That's me. It has been. A, it's a great range bag. It, it's a good hunter bag. I have a lighter, a lighter bag that actually is very similar to this. That we think is a, is a is a good hunter bag too. It's about one pound. This is about one pound fourteen ounces, something okay. like that. So if that's an if that's a reasonable for you, it is Molly compatible. Well, this is lighter. What what and is this intended this for? This is lighter, and this is a kit that we are targeting to law enforcement. It is light as you can possibly imagine. It is. It has just the things necessary to stop the bleed right now, and that is uh, you have your military tourniquet, you have your blood clotting dressing, you have your chest seals, and you have of course your. Uh, EMT shears so that you can uh, get uh, access expose. to it. You have, and then of course you, get, you have a couple of dressings as well. All but of that nothing, in there. Yeah, but nothing, but nothing else because if you're law enforcement, then believe me, you got a direct line to EMS. Right. And those people are going to be there faster than the average person who might be in a gun range that's out, out, yeah. out of town, not even in the suburbs. Right, and he's gotta know. go through a 911 right. system. So that's why I make this, I pack this one with more stuff than this one. However, the officer is often the first at the scene and he can already, he can make- Start the working. He can make the difference between life and death for that person that's been injured or his partner perhaps. Right, can you give us an idea of the cost? So. The, the bag with all of the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, what does that retail for? And uh, approximately, just round yeah. numbers. The, the various iterations of it, we have different different styles of this, yeah. uh, go for every any anywhere from 89 to about 119. Um, this kit here will go, this kit here, I, I, I'm talking about our Mylar kit here, I'm so sorry. Yeah. This kit here will go for about 149. Uh -huh. uh, that kit there will go for about one, uh, a 119. And we have, a, but an entire line of kits, not just survival type kits, but now an entire line of bleeding kits, including some that are specifically meant for active shooter events, where you have the ability to deal with four, four bleeding episodes at the same time. And I, I see these kits that have, I see these kits that have the publicity says, well, we got the ability to deal with half a dozen people or we have an ability to deal with this. And then you see it has exactly one 
EMT shares. Well, we give you one EMT shares per casualty. So you don't have to say. Everybody, wait, I gotta wait for the knife. Yeah. I gotta wait for the Hey, do you mind if I borrow your yeah, EMT right, shares? Right. I got somebody bleeding to death over here. Oh, I have one here. I have yeah. one over there. So we think these out. You I'll really you, think about, yeah. You know, you don't see, you don't see, I'm just an old country doctor, but I really have it as my mission to save lives this way. If I, if I can save one life by ha putting these material in the, in the hands of good Samaritans, well, you know what? The rest of my life will, I'll, I'll be able to say mission accomplished. Sounds good, Joseph. All right. Joseph Alton, MD, and this company is, give me your whole thing and give me your website. Doom and Bloom. You'll find our website at doomandbloom.net. Our store is store.doomandbloom.net. We are now at over a thousand articles, videos, and podcasts on medical preparedness for times of trouble. No doctor, no hospital. Just you as the end of the line. You can do it, and I'm here to help you. Awesome. Thanks right. again, guy. Right. Thanks.